Good morning, friends. Good afternoon. Good evening, wherever you are. Welcome back. Happy Monday. Monday used to be the saddest day of the week. Now it's the happiest day of the week because the markets are opening again. And here we are. Pre-market GameStop is looking looking like it's going to move up again. You know, nothing crazy. I, I wouldn't say, honestly, I wouldn't say that this is anything. I remember, you, if you remember those pops, those pre-market pops. I mean, we had some last week or yeah, last week and in January when I remember that Monday, the Monday of that crazy week in January, um, GameStop closed around $60 a share, opened at $90 pre-market and there was an excitement in the air. Uh, man, was I excited. And so, hey, we're up 5% pre-market. I'll take it. And I, I expect... I don't know. I, I don't know what to expect for today, for this week. I know that we've seen lots of research about GameStop having the quadruple witching this week, about XRT needing to, you know, things needing to go on with XRT and things like that. And my my response on this channel has always been to be reactionary. And so with that in mind, I don't have much. I mean, I could share with you some research on Wall Street Bets, on RGME, about um, about GameStop going up to $1,000 a share this week or something like that. And if that happens, fantastic. I, I We'll see, you know. Um, I had a call, a way out of the money call that I sold at a profit last week. I just, it, the, the call expires on Friday. So I, I have not sold my shares, but, but I sold my call. I sold it for, you know, $500 profit or something. I just, I felt a little uneasy about that thing. It was going to, it had to hit well over 800 to break even and uh, you know a $780 call and I was just like you know what I'm, I'm taking my profits and so what does that mean that means I expect the price of, of GameStop to go up I I will be happy delighted if we see the mother of all short squeezes this week but we'll, we'll wait and see and my shares the profit that I'll make for my shares is good enough for me as of now so Anyway, I, you know, I, I would have shared a lot more. I go to Wall Street Bets this week, and all they're talking about is adopting animals and stuff. And I'm like, cool, you know, adopt animals, that, that's all fine. Um, like, we have an animal adoption thread, so I checked last night to see if there was any good research, and all I saw was animal adoption posts, and I still don't know what's going on. But I was like, you know what? We'll, we'll uh, do some research on this throughout the day on Monday and Tuesday, and we'll talk more about GameStop as time goes on. Now, Bitcoin... Bitcoin uh, through, you know, it, it, here's the deal with Bitcoin. It was fantastic. It got up to $61,780 or something like that over the weekend. And yeah, I was excited, but um, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised that we saw, when, especially when the price of Bitcoin was hovering around $60,000. Um, I just felt like this was yesterday, really. I felt like we were going to go down. Now, how far down are we going to go? I don't know, but I don't think this is another 25% correction from the top. So we topped out a little under $62,000. We're down to 56. 25% correction would put us in the 40s again. I don't think that this is one of those. I think it's just a narrower move within a broader channel. And so... You know, we'll, my guess is we're staying in the 50s. That, that's a, a strong assumption of mine. I do believe that we have crossed $50,000 for the last time. My kids, <laughs> my kids, you, you see the, the thumbnail. I, I have a thumbnail in mind that I'm going to make after I'm done making this video. And it's going to say on it, my kids bought Bitcoin. So you've probably already seen that. And so my kids on Saturn, I'm so proud of them. They, um, my daughter was like, I want to sell something. And so we put a bunch of trail mix bags together and they went outside our front door and made about 30 something, 30 something trail mix bags. And, and sold all of them. And you know what they wanted to do after they sold them? Uh, they, they were out there for three hours, sold them all like a dollar a bag. You know, they made a total of $7 per child. Uh, but for $7 for three hours of work, I'll take it for kids under 10, you know. And uh, what, what did they want to do? Well, they wanted to buy Bitcoin. And um, 
So they bought in, they uh, they had way more money saved up than I realized. They wanted to put all of their savings into Bitcoin. All of them did. So my daughter had like over $100 and then my sons had around 40 and $30 and something like that. So they gave me the money and we went on an exchange and bought Bitcoin together. So they are, to, in, in total, are, are the proud owners of 0. 0.0036 Bitcoin. And I'm so proud of them. And you know what? They bought it at the peak. They bought it sixty-one thousand dollars. But I don't. I'm not worried about it. And now, now more than ever, <laughs> I am invested in people who have listened to me buying Bitcoin that their purchase would yield a return. Am I worried in any way that my children are going to lose money because they bought in at sixty-one thousand dollars and we're at fifty-six thousand dollars? No, by no means. By no means am I worried about them. Their return is going to be amazing. They will continue to buy in as they continue to make money. And as we get the, this fake money from the government, uh, you know, per child, where is that going? That's going to crypto. Now, one thing I will say, um, I'm, I'm just going to say this. I'm going to throw this out there. When it comes to crypto right now, I've always had $60,000 as a target in my mind as like, all right, any buy-in at $60,000, I am treating that as a short-term type investment. Now, I got in under $10,000. I've been in crypto for since 2014, but I got in pretty heavily with a large chunk of money this past summer under $10,000, and that is hodl money. You know, hold on for dear life. I am I may never sell that crypto, but any entry that I make after $60,000 is I, I'm treating more as a short-term type thing. And why is that? Well, let me tell you, I think I, I am on record many, many times as saying that Bitcoin is going to $200,000 this year. If for some reason it doesn't go to $200,000 this year, next year, maybe we'll peak out next year. But I, I firmly believe we're going to $200,000 for Bitcoin this year. And where will we crash after we hit $200,000? I I'm sure that there will be some kind of um, heavy correction, more than 25, 30%. I don't think it's going to be as severe this time as it was in 2017 because of, of the solid base of institutional investment this time around. But if I'm wrong, if there is as a significant crash, just like 2013, I could see us getting down all the way to about the $60,000 level. That's where I've had in my mind. So I might, I, I might honestly do this. Now I'm, I'm talking myself into this. Any entry above $60,000, I will sell at some point. Will it be $200,000? Not necessarily. I will look at the metrics and I will decide for myself um, all right, now's a good time. Now is a good time to exit. Maybe I'll set some kind of stop loss, 10% stop loss. But I mean, if I did that for right now, I'd probably have sold at whatever, $55,000 or so. We got down to, I think, a little under 50,000, 55,000. That seems to be a, a decent floor. And now we're at 56, we're moving back up. So we'll see about that. Another thing that I want to share with you, a new metric that I want to share with you about Bitcoin. I, I really like this it, it helps for perspective and i'll i'll um make this larger but if you look up top here daily bitcoin mayor multiple report so when this report came out oh that is really big when this report came out um i want to see if i can just zoom in one second all right here we go when this report came out bitcoin was you know hovering at around sixty thousand dollars and so this was march 14th this was oh it was just yesterday okay so what is the mayor multiple report man that's hard to read but the mayor multiple is the ratio of the bitcoin price to its 200 days moving average just keep that in mind 200 day moving average in the the multiple of where where bitcoin is in comparison to the 200 day moving average it is a measure of deviation of the bitcoin price to its long-term trend oh gosh all right oh all right we're good and um 
a historically low value of the Mayer multiple indicates that Bitcoin is cheap relative to its long-term trend, this is a good time to buy. A historically high value of the Mayer multiple indicates that Bitcoin is expensive relative to its long-term trend, not a good time to buy. So here we are right now. The current Mayer multiple is two, oh, 2.39. Now that's high because the average for the mayor multiple would naturally, I believe, let me zoom in on this again, be around one. And so, yeah, a little over one. Okay, so if you follow my mouse here, that would make sense that we would just be around one for an increasing asset, I guess, the mayor multiple would generally be above one more so than below it for given times. So we're at a 2.39, which if you look historically is high. Um, for sure, it's high, but we're in a bull run. And so look at look at these peaks here. 2014, 2013, Mayer multiple topped out at around a six. And then 2017, 2018, it topped out, uh, topped out a little around four. Now we're at 2.39. Now you've got to think about the moving average. Don't don't by any means be nervous that we're near the po the top because the moving average, the 200-day moving average, is moving up along with the price. And as we're moving up with this price, then that moving average is gonna gonna go up. And so the mayor multiple, if the mayor multiple were to stay at 2.39, this whole bull run, um, we would see easily 150,000 whatever b Bitcoin. There, there's for sure. That's that's like just how how it works. But during the previous two bull runs, uh, you know, 2013, we topped out at six, 2014, we topped out a little under four. And what I have been seeing consistently with this bull run is that we are, we are somewhere in between 2017 and 2013. 2013 was the more aggressive bull run than 2017. And we are looking more and more like 2013 as time goes on, but not nearly, not, not quite as aggressive. And so what does that mean? That means that I think this mayor multiple will top out somewhere around the five, maybe 5.2 range, and that will be the peak. And that is still months away. So, all right, if the mayor multiple were at five or 5.2, right, like, all right, if it was at five right now, the price of Bitcoin would be like $130,000. And we're at 60,000. So as time goes on, and as we see, you know, tops and corrections, we see this price move up and down, that 200 moving average is moving up, the 200 day moving average, and we will see an increase in, even if the um, mayor multiple stays steady, or goes down, we're going to see an increase in the price and an increase in that 200 day moving average. So if, if wherever we have, like, I, I don't know what to say now. I'm kind of stumbling, but pay attention to this mayor multiple report. Um, look up, I'm sure there's ways for you to Google that. Um, I, I would say this means the lowest, the most bearish prediction that you should give, in my opinion, Let, let's just say we top out at the same thing, around a little under four, then the most bearish prediction you, you could give for this bull run would be $100,000. And so just keep that in mind. Um, this is something worth paying attention to, as as is the MVRV Z score, which if you've been watching my channel, you know that that is my most um, significant, it's the thing I put the most weight in. And so um, I'll be checking that out, be visiting that, revisiting it in the next few days. I don't think it's topped anywhere out near where when we were at $58,000 uh, a couple weeks ago. So one more thing, NFT mania. NFT mania fits with crippling inflation, inflation fear, but don't call it a bubble. Um, I, <clears throat> here's what I'm going to do. Uh, NFTs are a bubble. Certain NFTs. Well, no. You have to be wise as serpents and innocent as doves with NFTs. A large majority of NFTs that are being floated out there, they, they are a bubble. They, it, it's a bubble. There will be no buyers on the other end very soon. Here's, here is an important way to look at crypto versus NFTs. 
is is Bitcoin a bubble? There's there seems to be some kind of mania with buying Bitcoin. We're we're at a tipping point where more and more people are going to buy Bitcoin. Does that mean it's a bubble? No. And here's why: because people are buying to hold. If you're buying to hold and hold and hold and never sell, that is a sign that it's not a bubble. But NFTs, people aren't buying to hold. They're buying to sell. And that defines a bubble. People want to buy an NFT for $100,000 now so they can sell it for $5 million a month from now. That is a bubble. Okay? <laughs> But some of them will last, is, is my point. But let, let me just read this article, because they do actually make good points. So, the non-fungible token frenzy hit a high mark this week when a piece of digital artwork sold for $69.3 million at an auction. But beyond, it's hard to argue that it's madness when prices uh, for just about everything else are soaring, too. But they are soaring, other things are soaring, but they're not soaring to the extent that NFTs are soaring. This is a, a whole nother, another level of crazy. So Jeff Dorman, chief investment offer, officer at Arca, a cryptocurrency invest, investment management firm, wrote this week in his newsletter, many investors are so concerned about inflation that they will invest in just about anything to eliminate holding cash on their balance sheets. That That is absolutely true right there. That's the thing from the article that I'm like, yes, we need to talk about that because people are putting their stimulus money, they're exiting the dollar, they, they don't feel comfortable. Well, let me just read the next part because he says this right here uh, when investors become too scared to hold cash even for a short period of time you know the world isn't quite as it used to be that is what's happening right now in the united states we're all getting our stimulus checks we're getting it like some people i'm sure have already gotten it i had checked my bank account before making this video i have not gotten it yet but i've already spent the money I've already invested the money. I've put it into Bitcoin mostly. Um, I invest into some smaller coins. Um, what, what did I invest in? Um, Ave and Algorand, five hundred dollars into those those coins. And honestly, I, I didn't do a ton of research. Algorand, I've heard very good things about. I've done a decent amount of research, but I just wanted a small cap coin coin because it's likely that during this bull run that it's going to outperform Bitcoin. But anyway, my point is, I'm I'm exiting. The, uh, like that that money is hitting my bank account and I'm getting it out of there and putting it into investment That is not a sign of a healthy economy and that's not a sign of a healthy currency And that's what's going on right now is people. Yeah, people are exiting and so that doesn't mean you put it into NFTs though And so here we go The reach for yield could attract investor interest beyond just art and collectibles NFTs will expand beyond current use cases such as collectibles art and gaming into more traditional use cases like know your client asset bank lo loans which for sure I'm, I'm down with that um, i.e. putting the value of your house slash car on chain to collateralize a loan a fractional ownership of, a sp of specific properties that's interesting uh, from an investment standpoint, companies and projects that facilitate the growth and trading of NFTs could be big winners. And yes, so I'm, I'm going to stop here with this article, but this is this is how you should approach NFTs from an investment standpoint. Companies and projects that facilitate the growth and trading of NFTs could be big winners. You could make money making art, being an NFT creator. You, as far as the creation and selling of NFTs, by all means, go for it because people are paying in Ethereum for, uh, for random crap and it's ridiculous. Uh, I was alerted to this on my chat on, I think, Thursday on my live stream. Uh, one of the regulars who comments on the chat said uh, his, his name, he, I'm assuming it's a he, Gwarns. He said that he had a friend who, who has zero followers who sold a piece of art at an auction on one of these platforms for something like 16 Ethereum. And when I heard that, my initial reaction was, bubble, <laughs> this is a bubble. But my second reaction is, I think I need to become an artist. Now, do I have any art skill whatsoever? I have zero skill in art. If I were to draw up something for you right now, you would laugh at me and you would probably ignore me for the rest of our lives. But will I sell my art on one of these platforms and make even half an ETH? Will I be happy with that? Uh, yes. Yes, I will be very happy. Will I be happy selling something for a tenth of an ETH, a hundredth of an ETH? You know, 
I will put work into it. And so if you if you want to explore this, by all means, go for it. Here's a platform, OpenSea.io, the largest NFT marketplace. I did create a profile on here, and I'm having some some trouble. Maybe it's with my browser. I have it, it's maybe it's a sign that I'm just not even going to bother with this. But hey, you know what? Become an artist. Sell your digital art to to schmucks on the internet and um let's see let's see if they actually make money off of your art my guess is that that art will one day be worth zero dollars now other things maybe will have a, a longer lasting uh lifespan but don't buy nfts please uh whatever this this video is for entertainment purposes only uh do your own research don't be greedy your returns in bitcoin and other cryptos are going to be phenomenal this year I would just hate to see you buy some random crap on the internet, a piece of digital art, and then be stuck with it and never be able to sell it. Because I think that's going to happen. It's going to happen a lot. So, that's it for today. I will be monitoring the price of GameStop. Let me go back here and see. So, all right, two, oh wait, that hasn't refreshed. Let me, let's see where it's at. I don't expect it to be much different than 278. Yeah, 279.27, good signs, good signs. We are moving up, slowly but surely, we're moving up. Um, we'll see about the rest of the day where we go. But otherwise, let me know what you wanna talk about in the comments. Uh, let me know what you had for breakfast, for lunch. Uh, please, again, like, subscribe to the channel. Uh, thank you again for joining us. Peace out.